don't know how it is. Dang, yeah, I know, right? You're always <laughs> behind it. <laughs> That's how I felt yesterday. Okay, close your ABB. Check, check, and tell us to leave. Okay, here, check, tell us to leave. Do your own
As the morning sun rises in the north, it sheds light on a new generation of ice flows in the Arctic. A change that will raise many concerns regarding the environment and operational securities for America and her partnering nations. While the Earth's climate continues to change, the Navy prepares for what could become a crucial strategic interest. The Arctic is important not only to the Navy, but to the country at large. It, um, it's going to become a major sea lane. And as these sea lanes begin to emerge, the Navy will rely on research and science to guide the way. Roughly 200 miles north of Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, an ice camp is constructed and maintained by sailors, scientists, and engineers in support of the Navy's ice exercise, also known as ICEX. So we're here to uh, measure the thickness of the ice cover. And um, the reason that we're here to measure the thickness of the ice cover is to help submarine operations. Uh, for starters, uh, submarines need to know the thickness of the ice cover for tactical purposes. They also need to know them for safety purposes. A submarine needs to surface um, if it's in trouble, so it needs to know where the thin ice lays. And submarines also play a role in addition to an operational standpoint, they also play a role scientifically. Submarines have been taking information about ice thickness, again, for operational purposes, but they've been storing that information and keeping it uh, since the 1950s. And that information actually gives us the best history we have of how thickness is changing um, as a function of time and right now as a function of climate change. Submarines collecting this data will face various challenges along the way. Communication will be vital. And then we can go into the set and draft position the boat. Well, the biggest challenge under the Arctic, unlike any other ocean in the world, is uh, you can't go up to the surface at any time you want. There's uh, a lot of ice up there, so you, you have to find a place you can go up, and you have to make sure your system is and your crew is trained to operate for lengthy periods of time under the ice. You'll still go with it if you're pointing into it. What I don't want to do is set up. I want to be able to counteract that counteract too. You also would treat casualties different uh, and some operations a little differently than you would uh, being able to come to periscope depth. So at the ice camp, there's a, there's a grid that extends about 10 miles around the ice camp. And within that, that grid, we can communicate via underwater telephone. And uh, sound goes through the water, your voice goes through the water to the ice camp. Iceman, this is Atlas. Marvin Garden's team departed my location. Well, you just take a little second for the We do have uh, some very effective systems on board that we use to keep track of what's overhead uh, and what's in front of us, too. Submarines originally surface at an angle, a maneuver which minimizes stress on the vessel's hull. However, in the Arctic, punching through three to four feet of ice will require... Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. Back at the camp, 
Captain Jane and his crew of British and Canadian Navy counterparts maintain the watch, coordinating a vast array of operational duties. We have an incredible partnership with the Royal Navy, as well as the Canadian Navy, to provide watch standard support for 24 by 7 submarine operational safety during our exercise period. not only control and manage uh, all the submarine operations, but we also control and manage uh, all the flight operations that support, including helicopter flights with remote field parties in, uh, out to remote sites in the Arctic. The Arctic presents unique tactical advantages the ISIX team will continue to analyze. However, this exercise is not cheap, and with future budget cuts, Researchers like Jackie and her crew continue to stress its importance. And if you're going to operate in an environment, you have to practice, op you have to be ready to operate in an environment. And the Department of Defense really prides itself on having, being ready to, to go to any environment if need be. The Navy still has much to learn about the Arctic, and time will only tell where these sea lanes may lead. Reporting for All Hands Television, I'm Petty Officer Andrew Breeze. All right, remember to hang on to the end of it because it's not attached to anything. Now what is that you're plugging it into? This is the uh, power pack and also electronics. Since we're about six miles out and our radio is about five miles of capability, nice man. Mm -hmm. we have this to uh, put Marvin it on Gardens. a longer Gertrude antenna, over. bring it up higher on the horizon so it could try to travel all the way to is the that camp.
No! There you go. Shut, shut, shut. Oh, there we are. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Welcome aboard, sir. Captain, standing by at the bottom of my hatch for, for you, sir, whenever you're ready to come down. Oh.